We are back. The Diedrich Taylor Coaches Show, episode number three. The first two episodes are online, YouTube, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to your podcast. It's on YouTube as well, so you can see our pretty faces. Now we move on to episode number three. We want to have first the first two up, so you can watch them in succession, where we talked about what the podcast is going to be, and then we talked about embrace the suck and the team motto and what Diedrich went through during the off season and Diedrich we're back. So before I get into anything, hello to you. How are you, man? Good. Things are well. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Thanks to all the people that are listening. Um, thanks to, to you first and foremost, just in terms of getting the information out of me onto this type of venue so that hopefully the people can take a listen and they'll they'll learn something um, just as I have uh, about this COVID and about our program and about the current situation that we're in. And we said on our last couple, couple of podcasts slash video recordings that we will have a mailbag throughout yeah. each episode. We're not going to have it yet. Um, still haven't gotten enough questions yet. It's dtaylorcoachesshow at gmail.com. That is dtaylorcoachesshow at gmail.com. Send us your questions. We're hoping to have the mailbag part of the episode in episode number four. But the reason why everybody's watching, the reason why everybody's listening is they want to hear what's going on with this program. And we were planning on recording an episode tomorrow. And we're going to go basically name by name and break down the roster. But that's not going to be what's going to happen in this episode because we left this as episode two. We said, okay. Episode three, we're going to do a preview for the game on Wednesday. There's not going to be a game on Wednesday. There has been a positive test in the Cal State Fullerton men's basketball program. Before we get to just the implications going forward, I do kind of want to get from you, Diedrich, what the protocol is. What's going to happen? That individual player who we're not going to name because of personal reasons what is that player doing right now? How long are they staying in isolation? And what does the rest of the team need to do now? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. It, it's actually surreal um, because you say you'll be okay with, you know, finding that out. It's inevitable or whatever you say. But when it actually hits you and hits your, your program, I think it elicits a different type of emotion that maybe you're not ready for. Um, quite frankly, I was I was mad, I was frustrated, I was upset, but then I went in right into caretaker mode in terms of what does our team need, what's the protocol, what happens next, and so we had to kind of iron that all that out as we were kind of enduring this this thing, and it was, like I said, it was surreal because the head athletic trainer, Jamie Potter, came on the court as we were practicing, like in the middle of practice, and came right to me and said, Coach, we have an issue, we have a problem. And before she could say the next couple of words, I already knew what it was, I just out of nowhere. And I wasn't even thinking about that, but I knew um, we had positive, a positive test. And so she let me know that one of our guys had tested positive and we needed to basically stop practice and everybody needed to leave campus immediately. Um, and so it was almost like a uh, blowing in an ant hole. You know, people were dispersing everywhere and, and I was kind of encouraging everybody to quickly um, disperse, you know, grab their stuff. And obviously we don't use our locker room. They get dressed in certain, in, a, uh, in chairs that are six feet apart from each other. And so they went and basically got dressed and probably uh, a good thing, they're not used to taking showers, so they didn't have to anyway. Um, they went on their way and, and uh, we obviously let the person know. Um, and so his prognosis in, is, is that he will isolate for 10 days. What does that mean? That means he is not to go out anywhere, not to see anybody. Um, we're in the process of delivering food to him, but basically he's in his apartment and in his room within the confines of his room, you know, that has a bathroom. And so he's not allowed to basically go anywhere. You know, the only bad part is, is that he has to govern himself. Um, you know, there's no, no, no one there to basically watch him, but he has to do that for 10 days, you know, and the ironic thing that we that we're living is the definition between isolation and quarantine. So he right now is the only isolating uh, figure on our team. 
where the rest of us, staff included, managers, GAs, whatever, we are now under quarantine and our quarantine is 14 days. So much so to where we got a letter from campus, each one of us basically stating that we are, have been exposed and that we will be allowed back on campus. I think the actual date is December 4th. And so we are in quarantine, um, which is longer than isolation um, because they're either hoping our symptoms don't show up or if they do show up, they're giving those symptoms time to manifest itself and we can kind of catch it before it gets, you know, before it gets crazy. Um, What's the difference between quarantine and isolation? There is no real difference, so to speak, in terms of um, the meaning of the word. It's just, I think what I know is the time frame. 10 days is isolation versus 14 days quarantine. Now the quarantine, if you test negative, which a lot of all of our guys have up to this point, um, they're still allowed to go out and do essential things, go to the grocery store, go get food, you know, obviously wearing a, a mask, um, but they will quickly, they're, they're not allowed to basically go anywhere or do anything else. They have to come back and kind of quarantine themselves. Um, as long as they don't have symptoms and as long as they continue to produce negative tests, they can do the essentials outside of their uh, shell, so to speak. But Okay, so, so as... So to make this clear for everyone, isolation means that that individual cannot leave his room, he's getting food delivered to him, cannot leave at all whatsoever for 10 days. Quarantine means you can still leave your house or your apartment to go do anything necessary, whether it's grocery shopping, whatever it is that's necessary, you wear a mask as long as you come right back, basically. So you're not stuck in your house or apartment right now if you're in quarantine, but you are in isolation basically is the way I understand it. Now it could be different. It could be, um, you know, it could be, could have a different connotation or a different meaning. And I think that's the most frustrating part is just defining those two words. I mean, if you take the word isolation and quarantine by definition, they mean something different, but regarding this, um, this case um, or the circumstances, I think they represent a different, a different connotation. At least that's the way that I'm interpreting based on what our people are telling us and based on what our team, uh, uh, it, the way that they are responding. And let's be honest. I mean, we're going to call a spade a spade here. It's you, you look at the isolation 10 days, the quarantine period is 14 days. The person that tested positive has four less days. And after those four days are up, they can pretty much do whatever they want if they test negative and they've cleared that isolation period while there still is that extra four days for the quarantine period. That sucks. I mean, we've talked about embrace the suck. That sucks. That is the epitome of embracing the suck. You know, um, it, it literally is putting uh, those words into action, figuring out and learning a way to embrace what we now know sucks. You know, we've worked as hard as we've worked for three weeks or four weeks you know, putting all of this together. And now all of a sudden we're shut down because, you know, we've tested positive, but I think, you know, personally it's, it's inevitable. Um, one of the ways that the, the virus is transmitted is, is human contact. Well, if you think about what we're doing in, in basketball, it is the essence of human contact. And not only that, but it is, it is encouraged, you know, and not only that, it's also consistent. And so you look at college basketball and you think, you know, it's inevitable, in my opinion, it's inevitable that, that we're seeing what we're seeing in terms of different organizations and different programs, you know, producing a positive test. Um, case in point, we are supposed to go, or we're supposed to go to Seattle to play San Diego. Well, I called their head coach right before practice, their practice started to tell him, hey, we've been shut down and so on and so forth, and we're not going to make the trip and so on and so forth. And he's like, hey, I'm really sorry and blah, 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 blah. Not even an hour and a half later, he calls me back and says, D, we're not going to make the thing, make the tournament either. We just had another guy or not another guy. We just had a guy test positive as well. So us and San Diego are kind of going through, uh, through it at the same time. But nonetheless, you know, I think it's inevitable that we'll all experience it in some way, some shape, form or fashion. Yeah, it's going to be survival of the fittest. I mean, you and I discussed this last episode that it, it's going to be a 14 day, basically just you're doing nothing. And if it happens during the season, you're going to end up forfeiting most likely four games. And I'll tell you one thing, and I want to go back to the time frame in a second, but it is worth noting that sometimes it takes an incident for a group to get serious about something and a wake up call. And in this case, 
This is before Big West play. It's before any games that matter. This should be a hell of a wake-up call to your guys saying, hey, you're looking at what's going on right now. If we get a positive test during the season, we're shut down for two weeks. We're going to forfeit four games. You've seen that it can happen. So now wake up, mask up, physically distant, and do whatever you can to get through these couple of months if you want to play basketball in March. Without question. I think, you know, the, the, the coach in me says all of the things that you just mentioned and, and above, you know, but I think the realist in me in, is, is that we are going to suffer yet again another setback. That's just being real. Um, and, and it's weird to live your life that way because day by day, you literally are living, you know, day by day, um, just waiting for, as Jamie did, to come on the floor and tell us, hey, we got to, we got to, we shut it down, you know, but I think um, the late Kobe Bryant put it best with our team and our message moving forward is edit your life. And what that basically means is in this case, in this instance, we'll edit and cut up and do this and that, but it is literally is editing your life and producing a lifestyle so much so to where you do your academics, you go to practice, you do whatever's gear, uh, whatever they're asking you to do in practice. And then basically you come home. You don't have time to interact with Joe or interact with Jimmy or interact with Sally. You don't have a chance to do those things because it, it, negates two things all that you've done physically in terms of trying to prepare but I think it also reality speaking it negates you know the chances it impacts your life your livelihood and so um, we've we've been preaching that but I think now it, it takes on a different meaning and and it's never and it's not what they do with us you know once they come inside the building they get checked and so on and so forth I worry about our guys that are 18 to 23 year old, they you know, what they do when they're away from us. And then when they're away from us, whatever activity, they're bringing it back to us. And so I, you know, being a realist, a realist, I think we have to be aware of that um, because unfortunately I can't mandate that. I can't watch them 24 hours a day, seven days a week or else I would, but we also have to trust that they understand the significance of what they're doing and, you know, we, we didn't do that, unfortunately, and we caught the virus and we have to suffer the consequences that they, that they are. Um, but I think also it's an opportunity for a lot of positivity in terms of us being healthy now. We, you know, we have some guys that not COVID related, but are injured, you know, with the knee, one guy doesn't have an arm, the other guy's is, is, is hamstring. And so we have, you know, that time built in now that we have to not do anything um, and hopefully they can get healthy, which in turn, I think will help our ball club on down the stretch. I want to go back to when the positive test occurred. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me the day that the testing happened and the day that you found out the results? So uh, our team there, we're all testing three times a week, starting last week. So Monday, all of our players are being tested PCR tests. It's not the antigen test. It's the PCR, which is, which is the gold standard. The nasal swab. Um, yeah. So they are basically the health center is, is testing our team. Our staff goes somewhere else, but our team, all of those guys are testing. So they're testing three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So they tested Monday um, and it took until Thursday for them to get the results. And then they walked on the, on the practice floor on Thursday and basically shut us down. Now we had practice obviously Monday. We had practice Tuesday. Um, we were off on Wednesday and Thursday. We were kind of resuming. And so we were we were back in connection and with each other. And so, you know, the, the concern is the, the level of exposure to each one of the people, you know, by the person that that produced the positive tests. And so we are basically following the, the protocol that has been set forth. Um, by the NCAA, by the county, and, and all of those people that are that are supposedly experts, um, and, and basically living our life, you know, in a, in a secluded fashion for the next 14 days. So that means that the test happened Monday, which means that the person for the next couple of days was positive and was and was practicing. So yeah. let me ask you this: since you said Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or when the test happened, yeah. so the Wednesday test results have those come out? Have those come back yet? Those have come back. 
Um, I think those, are, I, let me say this. I know our, for our staff, they've come back. Okay. And they have pr produced a negative result. I don't know that I can necessarily say what With 100% certainty about the Wednesday test results if they've come back. I, don't, I can't say that, I, but I can say with 100% with certainty with our staff, uh, the Wednesday results have come back and we're all negative. The Friday results have all come back, we're all negative. We took another test today, Sunday, mm -hmm. that we're all negative. So the staff is safe, but because we've been exposed to it, we are still supposed to quarantine um, for the necessary days. So that means that the Friday test occurred as well. So I'm assuming by tomorrow, you'll for sure have, if you haven't had the Wednesday results back yet, which um, you may or may not have it. And if you have the Wednesday results, then most likely they're negative since you still only have that one uh, positive. You'll still, by tomorrow, you'll most likely either get those Wednesday for sure, or you'll probably get those Friday results back tomorrow and you'll know whether this is spread. Yeah, and I think they already have gotten their Wednesday results back and and yeah. And, and like you said, what we're waiting on is Friday's test. Mm -hmm. But I think the telltale sign will also be Monday's test because once you've been exposed to it, it's so many days of testing in between mm -hmm. the date of exposure that they're saying you should wait. It's five days. So Monday will be the fifth day and we'll test our team. And that in turn, I think will tell us whether we, you know, will have another positive test or, or, or you know, it'll basically suggest or say the outcome to for, for all of our guys. Yeah, I mean, for whoever has been following this, which I'm assuming is almost everyone that's listening, if the exposure did happen to somebody else, it most likely happened on Tuesday or Wednesday. And it does take, like you said, about four or five days, um, up to two weeks. But normally when you see it, it's but between five to seven days is when it starts to show up. So like you said, those Monday tests, will be important to see if this has spread throughout the team. And so let's say worst case scenario, it has spread to somebody else mm -hmm. and you find out those results because the test will be on Monday. You'll find out the results, let's say on Wednesday, does the clock reset for another two weeks? I think, I think it will reset because we have also been exposed to it. Mm -hmm. and so that is probably a medical question that we have to ask our trainers and, and ask our, uh, the medical staff on campus, you know, how all of that looks. Um, I'm hopeful that, you know, we don't have a, another positive test, but then there's another side of the house that suggests, yeah, you want to test positive if you have one, because now they're saying if, if more people test positive, they, you don't have to test that person for at least 90 days. There are some people that say you should not have to test for 120 days, but I know it's 90 days for, for Cal State Fullerton and, and their their protocol. So, so we'll obviously enact that, but um, you know, there's so many questions. And again, I think you can understand the level of frustration or the level of anger that, that, that exudes from me is simply yeah. because of the level of information is so inconsistent. It's this, you know, and it, it doesn't always say if this happens, then you get that. It's always some derivative or some variable in there that, that makes, the equation a little bit different. And so that, uh, like I said, it, it you know, it, it becomes frustrating and, and emotionally taxing for, you know, for the leader of the program in terms of how, what do I do? How do I, how do I move forward? You know, and that's my next question. That's my next question to you is what do you do now? Cause these guys can't touch a ball for two weeks. Yeah. We heard about the NBA before they went into that bubble. You had Steve Ballmer sending equipment to some of his players you had guys that were doing Zoom with their entire team, whether it was Zoom workouts or just yeah. Zoom to get everybody just on this, get everybody on the same page. What are you doing now for this program? Is there going to be a designated time that would have been practice time that you guys are going to get on a Zoom and you're going to talk? Is there going to be a time where you guys can be on a Zoom and you're going to train? What's, what's your plan for this coming week? You know, a little bit of both. Um, we'll, 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 we've had experience, you know, this summer in terms of utilizing the Zoom app or the Zoom uh, conversation for workouts uh, in terms of our strength and conditioning coach. So we'll re-implement that. Um, I think he's already uploaded some information for everybody individually now, because now we have data, you know, we have information. So our trainer, he's he's uploaded some information in terms of rehab for those guys and prehab for the other guys and, and those guys that are hurt. And, and then also 
you know, our strength and conditioning coach, because he's been allowed to work with our guys, he has some information. And so he's uploaded some stuff and they can, and we've sent them some stuff and we'll send them some stuff, you know, bands and different things. They have some stuff at their own place that they'll use and try to get stronger and try to get, you know, um, some level of, of a workout uh, mm -hmm. while we're under this quarantine. And so we will also, as a staff, enact um, individual Zoom meetings. Um, we'll do it in small groups, um, try to limit how much we um, Zoom with everyone, because I think, you know, the, the, the Zoom uh, fatigue is definitely present. Um, and, and I don't necessarily, I don't like it per se, uh, but, but we'll utilize film, we'll utilize conversation, we'll we utilize some of the terminology that we've established. So um, I'm in the process of putting together a plan for this week and next week in terms of how each day looks for each individual, how it looks for small groups, and then how it looks for our team. And, and you know, at the end of it, we're, we're still going to work. We're still going to be trying to be productive um, with our eyes set on December 4th, uh, getting back to the floor and getting some work in. And I mean, it does make sense when if you do a huge Zoom with everybody, there are guys that are tuning out. Some guys are more vocal than others. If you have the small group, let's say you do it just the guards in one of them and you've got seven or eight guys, it's a lot easier to get everybody's attention. And also the one thing that's beneficial is that because of screen share, you can show film. So you can show stuff that you've, you've practiced and you can see what you guys have done right and what you guys have done wrong. Yeah. Obviously fitness is going to now be an issue. You take two steps back um, after you took a couple of steps forward when you got on the court, you and I, spoke last time I think it was only three weeks that you guys had been practicing yeah. so here you go three weeks that you're practicing and now all of a sudden you take two weeks off and, and let's be let's be honest that not only is it going to hurt your guys's um, fitness but now you get the risk of injuries when yeah. you start and stop like the way you guys are doing yeah. you do have the risk of injury so you're going to be really careful about bringing these guys along when you do eventually get back on the court. I mean, that, that's something that I'm, I'm sure you're worried about. Yeah, it definitely is at the forefront of our mind. It was at the forefront of our mind when we first started and as we continue. So to deal with that, I think it's a conversation that will constantly be had amongst our staff, but also inclusive of our trainer, inclusive of our strength and conditioning coach. And for us to put our heads together and put together a plan that we are hopeful um, will deal with the conditioning piece. It will deal with the lack of conditioning, which obviously leads to, as you mentioned, injury, you know, and that's number one with us. The priority is to stay safe, to stay as healthy as we possibly can. And as I mentioned, we've already endured, you know, some knickknack things that would not probably happen if we had the conditioning and the strength under our belt, but because we're trying to do everything all at once, you know, I think, I think it lends to, to that, that side of the house, if you will. Um, so we're going to try to be smart, you know, coming back. I think the biggest thing is just managing our expectations. You know, no, we're not going to be able to practice for two hours. So don't set up a two hour practice, you know, only practice for an hour an hour and a half in hopes of trying to go, go as hard as you can and try to build up to two hours or build up to game shape. Um, I think like you mentioned, you know, us starting and ramping up, I think we were getting right, right there, but now all of a sudden we got to ramp back down. So we'll slowly ramp back up as well as we can, which I think is a question that, that, that we'll, we'll talk about in terms of our schedule. What does that look like now? Because obviously we had to cancel the first three games and, um, we, we were probably going to reschedule the December 4th because of Portland and their situation, they weren't overly excited about or the administration wasn't overly excited about coming down here so we were thinking about that was a possible reschedule anyway so we were thinking about doing something and now we're you know we're three a week out from from even that trying to get ourselves back when do we play somebody else and stay safe you know and more importantly not not hurt each other or put it put us in a position where that that's possible so you know those are things that we're going to have to work out and things that we've already had conversations about in terms of when do we start how do we start? Um, and what does that look like in terms of playing somebody else now? That leads me to my next question, because the season starts on December 27th against CSUN. Mm -hmm. So that you are going to have 23 days if you guys do not get any more positive tests. Yeah. So what are the chances that you guys have a game or two in there? And how many games would you like to have 
in that time frame. You know, and realistically, when's the first game? When do you think could be the first game? Because there's no way that you're going to come back on December 5th and have a game on December 5th. Yeah, I think realistically, the first time that we can play and feel feel somewhat decent about putting us on the floor and putting us in that atmosphere will probably be around December 10th or 11th or 12th. You know, and then also you have to look at the fact that who are you supposed to play? Is that date available? Uh, and so it's it's literally a mumbo jumbo type of uh, deal in terms of scheduling. So you're you're looking at. I was talking to uh, Pac two uh, Pac twelve uh, team today earlier, and they're looking at paying another Pac Pac twelve out of conference play because they'll be up there, they'll be in the vicinity, and they they're looking to get games at this point. And so we'll be under the same guys. I don't know that we'll necessarily look to be playing conference opponents because of where we're located and how we're situated that way. Um, but, but I would imagine you'll, you'll see a share of division two schools. You'll see as many division one schools as we possibly can. I think to try to get us ready for December 27th and 28th, you know, if we can get ideally four or five games in between now and that date, wow. Um, you know, it'll, it'll give us an opportunity, but we're also under some, some pretty serious restrictions. Like the NCAA says that you have to take cons three consecutive days off um, for Christmas holiday. So you have to play that into and weigh that into the factor, you know, and then you have to, you obviously have to play somebody else. So do they have this date? Do they have this time? Do you also have the venue and, and is, is the school or institution willing to give you that and work with you that way and so it's you know then then i think the one biggest misnomer that we or i don't know if it's a misnomer but the one thing that we overlook quite a bit is you know the officials are we going to be able to find some some officials i was going to say are we going to be able to find some quality officials but I'm, <laughs> in my book they are all quality <laughs> oh what a guy what a guy man of the people uh so that realistically gives you I would say about 13 days or so, if you take away those three Christmas days yeah. to get in, like you said, those three or four games, so that's going to be a tight crunch yeah. and you want to try and get as many games in as possible, but you also don't want to get these guys fatigued and get these guys injured. So this is a really tough balancing act to try and figure out. And we said the season was going to be difficult and you're getting a dose of it right away. No doubt. I mean, I mean, the things that come to mind when you when you roll out 13 days and trying to squeeze in this amount of games is automatically the words S U K or excuse me S U C K S. Yeah. Totally sucks. No matter how you look at it, because it's not normal. It's not something that we're used to. You know, not only that, it's the experience that we have under these circumstances. We don't have any. We don't know. We don't know. And so we're going to try to make the best out of it and, and try to line ourselves up with like opponents, um, with, with people that are in the same situation in terms of having the date available and line them up and lace them up and play them. You know, but the one thought I think is, is obviously just try to keep us healthy, keep us safe um, and just try to get better, find a way to try to get better. And, and, and I think, again, you have to adjust your expectations in terms of, no, you're not going to be good at everything. You can't expect yourself to be good at everything. You can only pick, in my opinion, you can pick one or two, maybe three things on each side of the ball that you're going to emphasize and try to get better at day in and day out and hope they are good enough uh, night in and night out. But I, I don't. I think you have to manage your expectations. At least that's what I'm telling myself to try to help myself keep calm, to try yeah. to you know, keep from you know, driving my car off the, uh, off the edge there and into the Pacific and still keep driving. Yeah. Hey, listen, you can still keep driving. That'd be impressive. It, it, <laughs> it would be a super skill. No doubt about that. It's going to be a crazy couple weeks. And ideally, the next episode will be a roster breakdown. But we are going to kind of play this one by ear. Each episode will be kind of, we'll see what happens the previous couple of days before. And if there's another test po that's positive, we'll discuss what goes on next. But most likely, we'll be trying to discuss the roster as we look forward to the regular season. And this is the final episode before Thanksgiving. So yeah. we'd be remiss if we didn't wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving that's watching us or that is listening to us. Well, if you're listening to us, uh, um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, if you're on YouTube, do us a favor um, for Thanksgiving to give some thanks. Share us Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever. Um, Coach and I are both posting stuff on 
Twitter, and then we're sharing it on other places as well. So the more people that can see this stuff, I mean, it's not often you get division one head coach that is breaking down for 30 minutes, what's going on in his program and how many days a player has to isolate, how many days quarantine is happening, when the tests are happening, when the results of the tests are coming back. I mean, this is stuff that you do not get for many other coaches. So I, I'd, but I'd be remiss though, if I didn't wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving coach, happy Thanksgiving to you. I wish this was an episode that we were able to record before Thanksgiving. That was a preview of the tournament you're about to play in, but you got to embrace the suck. Embrace the suck, embrace the suck, but enjoy your Thanksgiving as best as you know, know how. And they're saying, um, the experts are saying, let's try not to get together. Um, before you and I taped this episode, I was on with my family for an over an hour of Zoom. And I mean, extended family, there was something like 50 people on the on the call. And so that too was exciting, but, but we have venues of ways of staying safe but still celebrating the holidays. And so let's take advantage of those. Let's, let's do what we can to be safe, to get back to some sense of normalcy, but enjoy it. I wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And, and I think that's the beauty of our show is we are able to pivot and change because it's somewhat live and yeah, we have some stuff planned, but we didn't plan for a positive test and now we have one. And so now you're gonna hear my thoughts behind that. You're gonna hear my thoughts and my suggestions and what we're, we're actually doing as a team. And I think that's probably the best uh, thing going. That's the essence of the show in terms of, of, of giving the people a behind the scenes look, but also finding out what they wanna hear via our email and email us our quest your questions and what it is that you wanna know, um, because we're gonna answer it, we're gonna talk about it. And we're going to try to give everybody an opportunity to get the information. D Taylor coaches show at gmail.com. That is D Taylor coaches show at gmail.com. Hit us up with any questions you might have until next time, coach. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks to you, man. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to your newly wife. That is so we should all be thankful for that. That Brandon found somebody that is going to be his wife. So, <laughs> yep, somebody fa- somebody said yes, man. Somebody was willing to spend the, their entire life with me. So, that. That I, makes- I, am, I am grateful wow. for that on this Thanksgiving. I'm grateful for my health and grateful that I was able to find one individual <laughs> that said, you know what, I will spend the rest of my life with you. I, I will let you go on Zoom, I will let you watch all the sports you want to watch. I am very grateful for that woman. No doubt about it. No doubt. It only takes one. I'm glad. Yes, sir. All right. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. Thanks. Take care.